Hey everybody, this is Luke and I'm here to discuss this week's challenge workout Wednesday for 2020 week 43. It's a mobile challenge and I actually think it's a really fun challenge though there are a lot of components to it. The goal of this uh, the challenge is to be able to drill into a KPI on a mobile dashboard. You can do it on a regular dashboard. I didn't specify the, you know, that it had to be specifically for the mobile option. Uh, let's take a look at what it does, right? So if I click into sales, it'll open up and show me a sales dashboard or sales uh, bar chart. And if I then click on profit, it opens up profit and closes sales. And if I do the same for margin, it does the same thing and customers as well. Uh, but the one trick here is when I click on it again, it closes all and collapses down. So how do we create this? I'm going to hop into Tableau and we'll get started. Uh, I'll basically, the, the key thing to know here is that we only need to, you know, do a tutorial through one of the, um, one of the drill downs and then you know you, you're going to repeat that for the other three but uh, then when we bring it all together we'll have one final step and so I'm going to make the one and then uh, kind of like pause the video fast forward and then uh, we'll have the rest so I'm going to jump in so here we are totally blank what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on columns and just type min 0, .0. I'm going to it's creating a placeholder for one mark type and then doing the same, except I'm going to edit this one and make it one. So I've got one going from one and the other going to zero. I'm going to change the mark types on both of these to the Gantt chart type, um, which is clearly near the bottom. Uh, I'm going to create a dual axis and I'm going to synchronize these two. On the one axis, we'll end up putting our label, and on the other axis, we're going to put our value. And I think the value is going to be the easier of the two to work out right now. Let's get rid of measure names. It comes in when we do all this. Um, and also edit your axis. We don't need this 0.5 extra or 0 0.05 extra that kind of comes in here. So I'm just going to fix this from 0 to 1. So now that I've got it from 0 to 1, let's add in some labels. We're going to do sales first. So on the sales marks card, I'm just going to click on it. I'm just going to double click and type sales. And this is just going to be my label. And I'll actually do all caps in this case. And I'm going to add it on label and you'll see it says sales. Now for that, we sort of need to get the plus minus functionality. Uh, on the other side, we're just sort of showing total sales. So I'm just going to take and drag sales out on my view. And I've got sales being shown now. Uh, so the, the next part I have to kind of cover off here is I've got sales coming through is um, I need this to uh, get again, get that plus minus. So how do we do that? Well, at some point here, we're going to need to create a parameter and it's going to need to be a string parameter. I'm just going to call it MN for measure names. Well, actually, uh, it's not actually going to be used as a, a you know, field label, whatever we want to call it. And I'm going to change this to a string. We're going to use a parameter action to add a label uh, in here. And I'm just going to say, all right, string can be blank for the time being. Actually, let's just type out sales because it'll be easier as, for us down the line. So I've got my field label in here. I'm going to show that parameter. It'll help us later on. Um, and then, you know, to dynamically show or hide this, we're going to use that parameter. So if the parameter says sales in it, meaning we'll have the sales toggle open, um, then we want to show a minus. And if it doesn't show sales, then we'll want to show a plus. And we can do that by creating a new calculated field. I'm just going to call it sales bar plus. I'm just going to say if field label equals sales, then we want to show a minus because it's already open. Else, we're going to show a plus. End. And let's just hit OK and we'll bring this field out onto text onto the other marks card where we already have it just labeled as sales. 
And there we have our minus. So now I'm just going to come in here and edit my labels. There we go. And let's go ahead and uh, right align it as well. So we want to keep it on this side of the bar. Whoops. I want this to be on the other side. So I'm just going to copy and paste that over. And let's make this like size 15 font so it's nice and readable. Uh, so there we go. We have sales showing up. Uh, we don't need the tooltip, so I'm going to get rid of that while I'm at it too. Just one of those things, right? You just can't, uh, can't ever ignore it. So I've got that working out where it's sort of, uh, you know, if I delete the field label out of here, sales, you'll notice it changes to a plus. We'll add an action eventually, so let's actually set that up. We need to build a calculation that we're going to use uh, that will drive that, that option. So all we're going to do is create a calculated field, and then we're going to just call this sales field label. And what this will do is we're going to create our parameter action off of this field. So if um, the field label is not equal to sales, then sales else end. So just open quotes there, meaning uh, if it already would say sales and you click it again, you want to show basically nothing in there. And that's going to allow for the that expandable bar chart to either show or not show in the end. So this is our field label. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to put this on detail because we actually don't need to see it. Um, uh, if you notice though, and this happened when I was building it, uh, it gets rid of the numeric value. I'm not exactly sure why this is happening. So I'm just going to hit control Z and I know that I can just put it on this, this Gantt bar here. So I'm just going to sales uh, field label out on detail. And you'll notice my number still is there. Again, I'm just going to come in on this other label. Let's make that size 15 as well and hit OK. Oh, by the way, on your marks here, let's change that color. I'm going to use this gray color and then change my opacity all the way down. This is the, you know, fundamentally how we create each of those KPIs. From there, you can uncheck the header, right click, format, and then I'm going to get rid of the row dividers, which, you know, for whatever reason come in when we are, um, you know, working with dual access charts. I personally don't see why they need to be there. And then of course those pesky grid lines and sometimes those access rulers, perfect. Uh, the last thing we just need to do is just change the background color here to, um, you know, we'll just choose um, this medium gray. And that's it, that's the, the first one. We'll just call this sales KPI. And, uh, you know, let's create our bar chart, which there are a couple of nuances in how I wanted it personally formatted. So I'm going to just find order date, which is the field that we're using, and I'm going to create a custom date. The reason I'm going to use a custom date is because then I don't have that plus minus drill in, and I'm just going to call this month. And of course, I'm just going to say months here, and um, we want that date part. So I'm going to just take the new calculation, bring it on a columns. Of course, it creates those separate groupings, but if I then change this to continuous, uh, I've got my values showing up. And from there, I can just do some light formatting and show that first letter, uh, my values. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is just take sales and bring it out as bars. So let's go find sales out on rows and then change this mark type to bar. Um, and that's, you know, let's do a little bit of formatting, but that's really all we want to do here other than drive that show hide functionality, which we're about to add after we finish up the formatting. So I'm just going to get rid of the zero lines. Actually, I'm just going to, you know, get rid of pretty much everything here except um, show header, grid lines, none. Great. And then we've got those pesky access rulers on rows, but on columns, I do want them. I'm going to just select that uh, gray value and there we go. Uh, last bit, just get rid of the, the label itself. We know those are months and that's where we're going to go.
we're going to use this to show and hide. So how do we get it to show and hide? Basically, we need a calculation that says when that field label is equal to sales, let's show it, and when it's not, let's don't show it. So if we go back to this, let's just type in sales. You'll notice our plus shows up, so we would want this sheet to show up. I'm just going to go create a new calculated field and call it field label is equal to sales. Again, sales TF. Should I show it or not? True or false? And I'm just going to click true here, and now it's going to show up. And if I go over here and I delete it off field label, you'll notice I have that plus and my view is gone because it's filtered out. Now I just need to repeat this process for every single one of my KPIs. So I'm just going to pause here and build out the rest. All right, so I have built out my visualization now and I've formatted it, but I don't have any of the actions in place. If you notice right now, my field label says profit. It's sort of off the view so I can test things. If I change it to sales, uh, you'll notice that everything's working nicely um, because I'm using a single container and I've, I've fixed the height of each of these KPIs. And that's all I've done. I fixed the height uh, of those KPIs and I, uh, you know, the others sort of hide because there's no borders or no titles showing up with the rest. So that sort of does the little trick of filling it in when it's in a single container. So I've got, you know, just using some container magic here. It's not really container magic, it's just the logic of how they work. And then that parameter I need to update um, to then show my values. So whether it's profit or sales or any of the other, uh, the margin, um, you know, I've got to build those out. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to go to dashboard and actions and actually create four of these. So I'm just going to do one and then kind of fast forward and do the rest very quickly. Uh, so I've got four sheets per, uh, or sorry, two sheets per four of the four metrics. So I'm just going to start with sales. I'm just going to call this sales on the select. We want to update that field, which I have uh, called measure names in the end. MN is my field label um, parameter. And then I'm just going to select the ATTR sales measure name field with a field label. So I'm just now going to hit OK. And I'll hit OK again just to show you now it works. I click on that value. Oh, something weird happened. We'll fix that in a second but now that value updates and you'll notice it opens up that dashboard. If I click on it again, it disappears. Uh, I just need to get that, uh, you know, this, this highlight to turn off, which to me, uh, I use a, a certain trick. You could also build this dashboard with set actions. I'm using a parameter action. So I'm gonna go and finish up my actions here and fast forward a little bit through this. And now you'll see if I test these out, again, I still have to solve my deselect challenge, but they all open and close, no problem on my visualization. How do I do that deselect? This is one of my favorite little tricks. I'm going to create two calculations, one called true and one called false. True is equal to true. It's just a Boolean. Oh, it already exists. I've already made it in my data set and false as well. So. Uh, false will just be equal to false. I'm just going to take those and I'm going to bring them out on my view. True and false. They're already there. Um, now I'm going to go to my dashboard and add an action and I'm going to choose a filter action, believe it or not. And I'm just going to say uh, sales deselect. I'm going to select all my values and on my sales value here on select, I want to go to the sales sheet. This is key. You go to the sheet itself, selected fields uh, from that sales sheet. And then we're just going to say when true is equal to false on that sheet. And when I do this, we take a look now that sheet automatically deselects. I just have to repeat that same process, a different filter calculation for each of these. So again, I'm just going to go dashboard, actions, add an action, filter. I'm just going to deselect all my values 
do it for profit now on select. So that profit deselect. I'm going to on the profit sheet, go to the profit sheet and make sure, by the way, you want to show all values on deselect. That's key here is when true on the dashboard is equal to false on the sheet, which is not going to happen. So you're not going to filter anything, but it will change that action. So now click on profit. You'll notice that deselect happens automatically. Same with sales. And now I have the ability to drill. And you'll notice my, my field labels updating over on the side as well. So that's it. That's how to build this mobile dashboard. I hope you learned a few things along the way. Um, I, you know, I, I, I really enjoy this setup um, and this design. So it's kind of cool to solve and go. But anyway, thanks again and look forward to seeing you guys in the next challenge.